Uh, yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Happy New Year, Ned. Happy New Year. Um, in his phone call with Ellie Cohen, Secretary Blinken said that the Biden administration um, is likely to seek the EU to join the effort to up the sanctions on Iran. Do you have any details of this joint effort? Anything new or when this has started? Well, this goes back to what I was saying uh, earlier in the briefing. Uh, we have consistently taken action using the authorities that are available to us uh, to attempt to counteract uh, the flow of and the provision of Iranian UAV technology to other countries around the world, including to Russia. Uh, without uh, forecasting what's to come, I, I am confident that we will continue uh, to take additional steps. We're always looking for additional targets uh, that meet the statutory requirements for uh, our various authorities, and we'll do uh, what we can to hold Iran to account. We've seen the same approach from many of our European allies as well. Uh, each European country has its own unique authorities. The EU uh, has its own unique authorities. Uh, it is our task to coordinate those authorities and where we can to harmonize uh, those authorities. Sometimes we will take steps that are slightly different, but in all cases, those steps will be complementary with one another. So this is only about UAVs, just to clarify. It has nothing to do with nuclear or snapback mechanism, just UAVs. Well, we have used our authorities against Iran, as have our European allies, uh, on uh, for a range of concerns. UAV technology, support to terrorism, support to proxies, human rights abuses, uh, attempts to uh, block the Iranian people from accessing uh, the open internet. Uh, so we have used all, a range of authorities for a range of concerns, and that will continue. And I have one more question. Um, on New Year's Eve, there were simultaneous organized tweets about Iran in 2023 and the future and the victory that's going to belong to people. It was mentioned in those tweets. Uh, it was published by six important Iranian public figures who are somehow leading the uh, opposition against the Islamic Republic, including Prince uh, Reza Pahlavi. Um, these tweets gave hope to people that somehow maybe a coalition against Islamic Republic can be formed. If this happens, can you tell us that you're going to uh, support that coalition? Well, first and foremost, this is a question for the people of Iran, uh, how or if they want to organize themselves. What we have seen over the course of the now multiple months of protests by the Iranian people has been remarkable in many senses, uh, in the sense that it has uh, it was uh, it has been sparked and, and in many ways carried by the women and girls uh, of Iran, but also the fact uh, that it has been organic. Uh, it has crossed ethnic lines. It has crossed geographic lines uh, inside uh, of Iran, and uh, it has, in a sense, been leaderless. Uh, that has allowed these protesters uh, to continue. Uh, and to uh, persist uh, with their efforts in ways that previous movements in Iran uh, have not been able to. So this is a question for the people of Iran, uh, how they wish to organize themselves, what they wish to call for, what they uh, see as their ultimate objective. Uh, it is our role and responsibility to support their freedom of expression, their freedom of assembly, every single other universal uh, right and freedom uh, that belongs to the Iranian people. Uh, follow yeah. up, uh, uh, follow up and I'll come back to you. Thank you. Um, the new Israeli prime minister is, and his government are going to follow up on his previous old uh, policy with regards to the nuclear talks. And he has said that, you know, they're going to try their best to stop the revival of, of that agreement. Um, is the Biden administration now a little more maybe on the same page with the new um, Israeli government, given that the talks have practically came to a standstill during the last six months. They've been at a standstill. And uh, the fact that President Biden uh, said um, during a, a midterm election campaign that the, the CPOA is dead. So on the first part of your question, we're always in intensive and constant discussion uh, with Israel uh, on Iran, including on Iran's uh, nuclear program. Uh, there's no greater supporter of Israel's security uh, than President Biden. 
uh, and uh, we remain ironclad. Uh, our commitment to Israel's security uh, is ironclad. Uh, the point we've made is that the Iranians killed the opportunity for a swift return to mutual compliance with the JCPOA. Uh, they most recently did so in September uh, when they turned their backs on a deal that uh, was, by all accounts, uh, essentially finalized, uh, ready to go. Uh, since then, the JCPOA just hasn't been on the agenda. It hasn't been on the agenda for months. It hasn't been uh, our focus. Uh, since September especially, our focus has been on standing up, as I was uh, telling your colleague, for the fundamental freedoms of the Iranian people, uh, encountering Iran's uh, deepening military partnership with Russia and its support for uh, Russia's war in Ukraine. So even though the JCPOA hasn't been on the agenda uh, for months, what, what is very much alive uh, is President Biden's absolute commitment to never allowing Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon. Uh, we continue to believe that diplomacy is the best way to achieve that goal, uh, but we've always been clear we're not going to remove options uh, from the table, and we're going to continue to discuss all options uh, with our partners, including, of course, Israel. Ned, you been, has been bringing this subject up at least during the last three, four weeks, uh, at least and at least once every week. Um, have you, have they communicated anything? Uh, do you see them bringing the subject up as maybe something to um, overshadow what's going on in with the demonstrations, or do you see any seriousness? Have you seen any indication of any seriousness? Well, look, the, the fact is that for months now. We have only seen foot dragging and empty promises by Iran. Uh, nothing we have heard uh, suggests that Iran has changed. We remain very skeptical of anything coming out of uh, Tehran on this issue. We've also heard uh, what in some cases is uh, just purely fiction uh, emanating uh, from Iran. The JCPOA, as we said, has not been our focus. Claims that we are presently engaged uh, in talks to revive the JCPOA, that's, that's just false. Uh, yes. Let's um, keeping on Iran, um, the UK is reportedly set to label the IRGC as a terrorist organization. Can you broadly say whether that's something the US would support and whether there are any concerns that designation might further derail the stalled talks? Well, we encourage our allies and partners to consider any ap uh, applicable sanctions authorities, including uh, whether the IRGC should be designated as a terrorist organization under their laws. Uh, as you know, in this country, the IRGC remains designated by uh, the United States as a foreign terrorist organization uh, and is a specially designated global terrorist organization. Uh, yes. Thank you, sir. It's about Ukraine. Do you foresee any peaceful solution for Ukraine during this year? Or 